Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the 10 14 days. For today's second video, day 10 will take us to the 25th of September. Uh, we'll be able to set up beyond that with the Exergy FS and ECM Ensembles. They are running to radical weeks. Have a look at CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. Gets us into uh, October. I'll get on that for you. In a moment, just say that first of the video saves, that's it, said UK World Forecast. Of course, we release the first winter 2025-26 update for you yesterday. Had nearly 3,000 views in 24 hours, so absolutely amazing response. Thank you so much to, uh, uh, to all of you, you know, for watching the first winter update. More winter updates weekly on the way every Sunday. So I say, please give us a like, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Thank you so much, everyone. For uh, doing that, the Gauss weather bit. Thank you so much, everyone. The calendar is out there, so if you'd like to snap up a Gauss weather uh, 2026 calendar, uh, then uh, you know how to go about that. Just send thirteen pounds to our PayPal account, and uh, we'll do the rest. Thank you so much, everyone. Right, going to start off in the tropical subtropical Atlantic National Hurricane Center, showing that we've got a red X. That is disturbance one. We've got an eighty percent chance of cyclone formation. In the next seven days, that could well become our next tropical storm and or hurricane. Latest whip from that from Earth, no school.net shows that low pressure is in control. We've got low pressure east of Scott to board, low pressure downstream in the Atlantic, and we're bringing in a westerly flow. A little bit like that as well. Another low waiting winds. It is a pretty buoyant Atlantic this September. Very different September feel. <laughs> um, and uh, more about that later. And uh, yeah, so the unsettled wet September goes on. Central temperature is continuing to come down. We're now sitting at 15.2. That's 1.6 degrees above 61 to 1990 average provisional to uh, yesterday to 14th September. So it looks like going to be about. 15 degrees, you know, for the first half of the month, and then we'll wait and see what the second half of the month has in store. But CT is coming down from that high start. Right, come on down. Right, uh, means for GFS, up rare temperature, and precipitation on top. I'm a bit better, and I? A bit better today. I've been a bit subdued the last few weeks, but um, I'm, on, I'm having treatment, you know, and I'm getting a lot better. <laughs> Got my wind back. Right, uh, means for the up rare GFS, up rare temperature, and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. So the red line is a 30 year. Upper air temperature average for Brum, for Birmingham. We're starting off below average at the moment. We are going to get a tick up as we go through the next few days. But then at the weekend into next week, we come back down again and revert closer uh, to average. All in all, when you average that out, we're probably uh, near normal to a little bit on the coolest side, actually, other than that, you know, warm period there. Precipitation wise, well, we're going to be uh, more uh, unsettled weather to come. So around Middle Park, we get some wet weather. And then after that, we've got more to come by the look of it at the weekend into uh, into next week. So an unsettled and coolish uh, pattern. Temperature anomaly. Six, five days to the 20th of September. A little bit above average. And then the 10th of day looks like that. So that's going below average again, Mo. Um, as we get look out towards the 29th of September. And the precipitation anomaly is next seven days to the 22nd of September. So, wet from a central sway, but a little bit drier on either side. That's slightly bizarre. 8 to 14 day is trending drier. Okay, let's start getting from your important chart day to end. Miss Abel HSU came at your road on midnight on Thursday. Low pressure northwest Scotland, and we're bringing him in from a west southwesterly direction. Now, as we go through the next few days, uh, every weekend, well, a trough pushes south and east, so that could bring some. Heavy rain with it, but eventually brings cooler air back southwards again. So if we run through that, you can see, but we start off drawing up some warmish air, quite warm air from the south, from southeast at the end of the weekend to the beginning of the weekend. But then the low pressure of the trough will dig southwards, drop southwards, probably taking some heavy rain with it, and then lowering the temperature. The wind switches around to more of a north or a northeast direction. That could be quite cool by the beginning of next week with winds in from the north and from the northeast. Icon again, drawing up that southerly southwesterly flow. 
at the end of the week and into the weekend. Looking quite warm in the south and in the southeast. We've got a deep area of low pressure becoming cut off to ourselves as we go through uh, the weekend. And that allows these cooler uh, north northeasterly winds to start pushing through. So a warm up at the end of the week and a bit of cool down over the weekend as we get to the start of next week. Well, high pressure dominating, so it should be mostly dry, but I reckon it could be quite cold, or certainly chilly anyway, under that area of high pressure, particularly so, and most notably so, I would have thought, at night. The KMA looks like that. Again, we push that trough through over the weekend. That could bring some very wet weather with it. I mean, as actually it's out of the way, we send the wind around to more of a north or a north direction. Beyond that, high pressure starts building in, but we've been cool air, so this is a good way to drop the CT, you know, if we start getting a run of cold, <coughs> cold nights, that could really start to bring down that uh, central in temperature. Could we end up with a 13 Celsius CT finish here? Hmm. Well, we end up looking like that. So high pressure sitting just to our west, bringing the wind from off the Atlantic. Mostly dry, uh, but a little bit of a cool side. Note, there is some sort of tropical storm and or hurricane there to the west, west, to the west of the Azores. Uh, just here. Um, so, again, we're going to see where, where that's going. Right, on to the GFS. It's midnight run. Again, drawing up that southwesterly flow on Thursday. Mild up, warmer air drawing up north, particularly in the south. Could be quite warm at the end of the week with both southerly southeasters. Might get temperature certainly into the low 20s, possibly give it a bit of sunshine into the mid-20s, but it doesn't last very long. We generate quite a deep area of low pressure over the weekend. That brings a lot of heavy rain uh, with it, and then we push back to wet weather through the country as we go through into the start of next week, and draw down these much cooler northerly, northeasterly winds. So, a brief warm-up, and then a cool down. Again, note, by the middle of next week, we've got tropical storm and or hurricane moving into the North Atlantic just there. Now, beyond that, we find the high pressure sinking through the country. That's a cold ridge. Oh, certainly cool ridge. We'll bring some really quite chilly nights, probably with uh, ground frost and wet uh, uh, as well, as we move up towards the uh, end of the month. And the ridge is maintained, really, as we get to the end of the GFS run. It gets to the 1st of October today, actually. By which time, that high pressure just drifting off into Eastern Europe, low pressure out to the West, and we're bringing up a warmer uh, southerly flow again. And then the GFS sinks then in comparison, when we have that warm-up at the end of the week, but doesn't last very long, a deep trough of low develops over the country through the weekend, brings heavy rain in with it, and then as the low pressure clears out to the east, down comes this north or northeasterly with high pressure out to uh, the west. So as we go into next week, again, trough of low pressure is uh, dominating the weather through the earlier part of the week where it clears out of the way, and that leaves us bed under what looks like a pretty chilly ridge of high pressure that could bring some cold nights in with it. As we get towards month's end, high pressure begins to drift away towards eastern Europe, low pressure developing out to the west, and that low pressure potentially bring unsettled conditions as we come to uh, month's end. So this is an unsettled September and, you know, that ends September on unsettled note. It begins October on unsettled note, actually, but of course that is over two weeks away. If you're enjoying the video, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. Drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this uh, little other videos of content. Don't forget to tell friends about Gaz. Don't forget to subscribe too. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. Winter updates have started at Gaz Weather Vids. So if you haven't checked, checked out the first winter update, please do do so, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for doing that. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, right, okay. GM. Again, with low pressure dominating the weather. The end of week. Into weekend, we switches into a southerly. We drop some warm air into the south and to the southeast, but not for long. Low pressure heads in from off the Atlantic early next week. Cuts it off. And uh, we end up looking like that in the gem, really unsettled. And this low just here, I think, is containing the remains of a tropical storm and or hurricane. And looks like it's caught up in jet stream and has our name on it. And then the ECM rounds it all off again, drawing up that southwesterly to 
southerly at the end of the week into the weekend. So it is a warm up briefly, but then this low pressure gets generated over the weekend will bring heavy rain with it. And eventually, as that low pressure the top pushes through, down comes these cooler north or northeasterly winds once again. That's next Tuesday. So we've got a trough of low sits across the south, a ridge out to the north, and we're bringing in that chilly north northeasterly. Low pressure right over top of country around days 9 and 10, bringing showers and or longer spells of rain and cool temperatures as well. Eventually, the trough clears away to the east, a ridge builds out to the west. That's been quite cold there and could deliver some chilly nights. And high pressure takes over strongly as we get to month's end. So that gets spurted for September with high pressure dominates. That's very different to what most of the other model output is showing for, uh, you know, end of September, start of October. But it's a possibility. It's like two weeks away. So uh, that time frame, that, uh, that range, uh, anything is possible. Anything's possible. Right, this is a precipitation shortcast based on my ECM run from tomatoshow.com. Well, in comes by the next batch of wet weather through the middle part of the week. Lots of heavy rain piling in from the Atlantic with that one. Then we're trending drier, but there will still be some wet weather to the north and the west. But the south and the east goes drier and warmer at the end of the week. Very wet there through the central swathe of the country by the end of the week and into the weekend. That's a generator area of low, of course, across the country. Um, so that pushes all the rain through, and then we then eventually see the temperature cooling down, but further wet weather uh, developing through to the beginning of the following week. So it looks like a real deluge, this, doesn't it, at times over the next uh, over the next week, 10 days or so. That's 25th September, still with showers along the spell to rain. Involved. These are the options on the table within the ECM Ensemble Day 4, Day 10 from the Icelandic Met Office. It gets us to the 25th September. 13 members of the ECM Ensembles with high pressure away to the north and to the northwest. Mostly dry, but a little bit cool. Winds coming in from the north and northeasterly direction. We've got 12 with high pressure to the northwest, low pressure to the southwest. Winds are coming in from an easterly direction. That west is where we We've got 8 with high pressure towards Greenland and over. But France, low pressure out in the Atlantic, winds coming in southwesterly direction. We've got seven with uh, high pressure towards Scandinavia, winds in from the east, and then we've got six with a scanty high. Uh, oops, got some scanty high, no pressure down here. Drawing a more of a southerly southeasterly flow with that one. And then finally, we've got five with chop of low pressure through the northwest, up out into the Atlantic. That looks very unsettled, right? Well, in two weeks' time. These are the options that we've got. It'll be getting us to the 30th of September. 14 members of the ECM on signs with deep low pressure through the northwest of Europe for months end. Last day of the month, got 12 with high pressure in control. We've got 10 with blocking around Greenland. Low pressure to the south and the east. Winds coming in from an east or east direction. That looks quite chilly. We've got 8 with low pressure in from the Atlantic. And we've got 7 with high pressure right over top of the country. A range of options, I have to say, at both day 10 and day 5. 14. So, a bit of uncertainty here, I think, for the last week of September. Which way we're going to go? We're going to break out of the unsettled weather and turn dry up, but potentially a bit cool, uh, you know, a bit chilly, or uh, will we keep the unsettled weather going? Watch this place. Dot, 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 dot. Right, let's just see what CFS has got to say, and then we're going to be done. So, uh, these are 500 millibar high I'm going to break it down into week periods. The first week period takes us from 15th to 21st of September. Next week, with low pressure in the Atlantic through the northwest of Europe, so looking unsettled again in the week here. Week two is going to be the 22nd of September to the 28th. High pressure is out to our west, then. Chop of low in over Scandinavia. Winds coming in from a northwest sea direction, mainly dry, but probably quite chilly. Week three <laughs> will be the uh, 29th of September, 5th of October. High pressure between Iceland and Scotland, mostly dry, but quite chilly. Could be whipping wind in from the east or feast of that. And then finally, week four rounds it off. It's the 6th of the 12th of uh, October. Probably some sort of chuff of low through the northwest. You're very small blocking there, close to Greenland as well. Temperature anomalies for uh, week one are looking rather cool. 15th, 21st of September. But check out week two. 
It's the 22nd, 28th of September, significantly below average. Could that get us into a 13 Celsius CT September? Mm, I wonder. And uh, week three, also looking a little bit on the cool side as well. It's 29th September, 5th of October, below average temperatures. And uh, nothing much to get excited about from a temperature perspective. Week four either, that's the 6th of the 12th of October, and also looks a little bit on the cool side. So very slowly, very gradually here, the temperature is coming down in a really warm year, other than January. Very, very warm year. But are we going through one of those periods where we see that draining away? And if we do, could that carry us on through the west, rest of the uh, uh, rest of the autumn? And maybe even into the winter. Wouldn't that be interesting? But early days, so we should see a time will tell. Right, we're done. If you have enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Subscribe, make sure to everyone for dear Matt. If you do get a sub, make sure you ding the bell and you'll be notified then when we are releasing our content and uh, live streaming, etc. etc. Thanks so much for dear Matt. Talking about live streaming, I haven't done live streaming for ages, but historically we have always done. Uh, live streams connected to the winter updates, you know, so um, discussing the first winter updates, discussing the second winter updates, etc. Uh, now, I can't do that this year because I'm working Sunday evenings. Uh, what for Gap doing my second job? However, one year, I think it was 2022, the winter updates are 22, 23, we did actually do uh, those live streams on a Monday, so we would release the winter update on a Sunday, give people 24 hours or so to digest it, and then uh, we'd discuss it and do a live on that on the Monday. And I think we might do that again, actually. So live streams coming back next Monday, we're going to do a live stream discussing the first and the second, because I can't do it tonight, but discussing the first and the second winter updates. So if you're waiting for a Gav live, yes, we're back business next Monday and hopefully then every Monday after that connected to the winter updates. I will confirm confirm it and confirm the time etc in a couple of days time on the community page of socials and that but uh, gals whether it's live streams coming back Right, okay, well, it's been joy being a pretty slide. Thank you so much for doing that. And tomorrow, guys, 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. Take the ball team down. I might try and do the extended European, European outs as well tomorrow. So uh, keep checking back to the channel for more. Make sure you check out the first winter update. It's very interesting. Uh, and uh, for that, for this one, that's all for now. So much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your birthday and bye for now.